So last time we looked at the generating function for Laguerre polynomials, and what we were able to show was that uh, this sum right here, our, our sum, or, or really our, our, our series which has as its coefficients Laguerre polynomials, this guy right here is equal to 1 over 1 minus t times e to the minus tx divided by 1 minus t. Perfect. Okay. So we, we showed that last time, and now what I want to do is use this fact right here in order to derive a recurrence relationship for Laguerre polynomials. And, and this is actually one of the, the biggest uses of generating functions in the first place, is in order to generate uh, recurrence relationships. And the way that you do it is by taking a derivative. So, so what I'm going to do effectively is just take a derivative on both sides with respect to t, and just go from there, see what happens. Uh, okay, so if I take a derivative on both sides with respect to t, what happens? Well, on the left-hand side, that's easy. On the left-hand side, we just get uh, n to the t, or n times t to the n minus one times ln of x. And then the right-hand side, this is actually quite a bit of work, um, so I won't do it here, but if, if, you, if you work through this, you know, if you put in, put in the hours of work, uh, what you find is that this is equal to uh, this right here. It's 1 over 1 minus t minus x over 1 minus t minus xt over 1 minus t squared times 1 over 1 minus t e to the minus tx over 1 minus t. Okay, um, so that, that, was, that was a bit ugly, so, but... Um, but we have it. So now what, what, what do we actually do with this? Well, the trick here is to uh, is to notice that this, this expression right here, this is exactly our generating function corresponding to this series right here. And so uh, what we can do is we can just plug in that series right here and then try and see how we uh, get a relationship between different Laguerre polynomials from that. And so, and so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to substitute that in right here and then I'm going to multiply both sides by one minus t squared in order to get all of our t's in the numerator. So what happens when we do that? Well, we're gonna have uh, one minus t squared times the left-hand side, n equals zero to infinity, and t to the n minus one ln of x equal to, and then what happens when we multiply um, all of these guys right here by one minus t squared? Well, we're gonna have one minus t, uh, minus x times 1 minus t minus xt times, and then our original series up here, sum from n equals 0 to infinity, t to the n, ln of x, uh, and that's that. Okay, um, so now, now comes, now comes the hard part. So now, now what we need to do is, um, is start well yes yeah, so now, now let's, let's try and simplify this at least a little bit so um, on the left hand side what we're going to do we're going to have one minus two t minus t squared times this this sum right here and then on the right hand side how can we simplify this guy well we can uh, rewrite this guy right here actually, actually rather nicely as one minus t minus x times sum n equals zero to infinity, t to the n ln of x, right? Because uh, uh, because we're gonna have one minus t minus x, and then we have plus xt minus xt, and that's, so that'll, that'll cancel giving us just this guy right here. Okay, um, so now, uh, right, so, so now, now it gets a little rough. Um, and so what I'm going to do in order to try and simplify things is, is by working on uh, first, the left-hand side, uh, rewriting the left-hand side, and then I'm going to rewrite the right-hand side. And so I'll start with this left-hand side right here. So we can rewrite this whole guy right here, this left-hand side, like this. So our first term is just this series right here. Uh, sum n equals 0 to infinity n t to the n minus 1 ln of x minus, and now we're going to have the second term, minus 2 times uh, the same sum, but now with t upped by 1. So we're going to have just t n times t to the n 
ln of x. And then our, our last term, minus sum n equals zero to infinity, n times t to the n plus one times ln of x. Okay, um, so really what we want is all of these terms to have the same power of n, because then we can pull out, then, then, then we can just look at uh, each term one by one in the sum in terms of how they're grouped in powers of t. And, and that, that's a, uh, that, that's, that's an easy way to, uh, to get a recurrence relationship here. And so let's, uh, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. So, um, this first term in this, in the series is actually nice because we automatically have that, uh, the first term in the series drops out. The, the first term doesn't contribute because, uh, we have this n and we're, the first term is n equals zero. And so what that means is that we can just, uh, uh rewrite this sum as by, by dropping the first term effectively as, as n plus one times t to the n ln plus one of x. So, so here we've, we've basically just dropped the first term and the second term, what about that? Well, the second term is already, is already how we want it um, because we, we already have this t to the n right here. And so that's fine. Uh, what about this third term right here? So this third term, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're starting off, so so this first term doesn't contribute here as well, right? Because uh, this first term correspond, it has an n equals zero out in front, uh, and so that's not going to contribute. So the first term comes from n equals one, which corresponds to uh, t squared, so t to the two. So I'm going to start this sum at n equals two. If we started at n equals two, then what do we get? We get uh, t to the n, uh, so, so n minus one times t to the n, L, L, L to the n minus one of x. Okay, yeah, okay, right, right. So this is all good now. Uh, okay, okay, perfect. So we, we have our left-hand side handled now. Uh, now we should work on our right-hand side and try and rewrite the right-hand side, uh, similar to how we did here. And so I'll, uh, I'll make a little space for that. Okay, so let's get started. So if we expand this guy out right here, what do we get? We get, um, we have a one minus, yeah, so what do we have? We have one minus x times this series right here, sum n equals zero to infinity, uh, t to the n ln of x. Sorry, so we're expanding this guy up here. Um, so that's our first term. Next term is what, minus t, so minus n equals zero to infinity, t to the n plus one, ln of x, ln of x. Okay, perfect. Um, we wanna do the same thing as we did down here. We wanna get this all in terms of t to the n. So that means that our first term right here, we can remain, uh, we can leave unchanged because it's our, it already has t to the n. Um, but the second term we're going to need to change. So this series, uh, the first term corresponds to uh, n equals zero, which is t to the one. And so because of that, I'm going to uh, write this as a sum from n equals one to infinity. So we can just start with t to the n, but then this ln gets uh, gets indexed down by one. Okay, great. Um, so now we have both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of our equation written in terms of sums which have uh, t to the n in them. And so what that means is that now we can we can recombine everything and we can recombine everything uh, and drop all of our sums and all of our t to the n's because we know that our sums are written such that it's clear that uh, the left hand side and the right hand side correspond to the same order in t. And so we can just write down, we can just write down the left hand side uh, and the right hand side like this. We can say that, all right, uh, drop this sum, drop this t to the n, we have n plus one times L sub n plus one, and I'll, and I'll drop the x dependence because we know, we know this is x dependent. Um, then we have this term right here, minus two times what times n ln minus n minus one l n minus one. That's our left hand side, and this is equal to what? It's equal to our right hand side, which is one minus x times l n minus l n minus one. Okay, perfect. So we have this, how can we simplify it? Uh, well, one thing we can notice that 
um, this right here, this this L uh, sub n minus one right here cancels with this one right here. And so that helps. And then everything else stays the same. So we can solve for L n plus one here. And if we solve for it, what do we get? We get that L sub n plus one is equal to, well, we, we add this over two n plus one minus x times ln minus minus n times ln or, or, or n, n times uh, ln minus one all divided by this coefficient right here n plus one and so we, we've done it it took a bit of work a bit of a uh, bit of bit of toiling with your series um, but we, now we have a nice recurrence relationship such that if we know if we know just two terms in our uh, of our Laguerre polynomial, so say the first and second term, then we can just just doing basic addition generate all of the other ones from it. Uh, so I think I will stop here. Um, in the next video, I'll do um, this this same type of thing, uh, except instead of taking a derivative of t, I'll take a derivative of x, and we'll see that in that case. Uh, in, in that case, we get a recurrence relationship, not just for ln, but for the derivative of ln. So we'll, we'll get some insight into the derivatives of Laguerre polynomials through that. Uh, so I hope to see you in that video.